In this next video, we're going to touch on the function of a relay. We're going to talk about how to wire a relay, uh, what the different components are of the relay, and kind of why we use them. Um, they can be very uh, critical in setting up a, a car for uh, proper fuel pump control, proper nitrous bottle heater or nitrous solenoid or purge solenoid, or as easy as like a, something as simple as a radiator fan or a trans fan. So um, let's get right into it. So the, the purpose of a relay is basically something that, that we can control a circuit through the ECU. We can turn it on and off under certain parameters or certain temperatures or what have you. We can use the MoTeC to program these things and then we actually send a hardwired signal out of the ECU to trigger this relay. Okay, So in your typical relay, um, <clears throat> what you'll have is two sides of a coil um, and we can use this to basically have our battery current available to a device uh, we're going to call this a fan for a simple demonstration so we can basically take the current of the battery which has a lot available and be able to transfer that to our fan through a relay and we can use our ECU to trigger this and if we use a relay the current across the coil here to actually energize this thing is very low so <clears throat> we have posts or terminals or positions whatever you want to call them uh, a typical Bosch relay has position 30 and 87 uh, in 87, we normally put our powered device. And we would normally put the 12 volt part of that device through 87. Now, you can use a relay to send ground from 30 to 87 as well. Whatever you have on 30 is going to go through to 87 once the, the coil is energized. So, um, the way this coil works is it needs power on one side and it needs ground on the other side. So a typical way that you would wire this up is position 85, you could run to a 12 volt switch like ignition source. When you power on your key in your vehicle, it's gonna provide half the equation over here, okay? And so let's say in our uh, ECU we have this cooling fan, we wanna turn it on at 185 degrees Fahrenheit, okay? Well, we can program the software to be able to do that and utilize one of the outputs in the ECU. Now, this output, we're going to, nine times out of ten, use a ground to come out of the ECU. Depending on the output, whether it's a half bridge or an injection, uh, spare low side injection output, um, injector output, or an ignition output, or what have you, they're going to generally send out ground. So we're going to have ground on this side of the equation. But it's not going to be available until the software sees the coolant temp at 185. It's going to send the ground out. <clears throat> and this coil is going to activate across here and basically provide continuity between 30 and 87. So in our typical wiring diagram, we would have the battery here, we would have the 12 volt fan here, we would have the fan grounded at some location. Whoops, I did that wrong. <laughs> at some location, we're going to have that on the chassis um, so that it can pull its ground side of the equation from the chassis and have that current um, not going through the relay. So, turn your key on, provides that half of it. ECU sends it over at the certain temperature. Bang, you got continuity through there. So, 87 is your source. 30 is your battery, 86 normally goes to the ECU, 85 to 12 volt switch. That's the way that we always wire them up. Now, 85 and 86 can be flipped. Okay, so 85 you could put to the ECU, and 86 you could put to your switch 12 volt, whatever you want to do there. Now, <clears throat> you could do this for a bottle heater for nitrous, you could do this for a nitrous solenoid, etc. Let's just take it through. Let's say that um, this is going to be something for nitrous. Now instead of having a 12 volt ignition switch here, you can have your nitrous master arm switch here. So 12 volt 
switched. Nitrous master. We'll just call this, okay? So, if for whatever reason this ground signal came out, as long as this switch was off, you wouldn't spray nitrous in this particular setup. Okay, because we're going to call this as a solenoid. Now, the other thing that you can do with the MoTeC as well is take this master arm signal and pin it into the ECU on an input. So part of the software, it's going to want to see that master arm switch getting activated. And it's going to go over here and say, okay, the switch is on. Now I can go from an inactive status to an enabled status. And then once all the parameters are here, hit here for throttle, bottle pressure, boost, RPM, uh, whatever else we've got in the scheme inside the MoTeC, all of that gets hit and, and uh, satisfied, then it will send out the ground. So it's just kind of some basic layout of how you do some nitrous. You could do the same thing for a fuel pump. Just keep in mind, 30 goes to the battery. A lot of people will put a fuse in here. This is a good practice. We like to fuse our stuff. Just make sure that you have enough fuse that the relay can, can carry that current and whatever the last device is that you're trying to power, whether it's a fan or whatnot. Some fans have inrush current of 60 or 70 amps, so sometimes if you have a 30 amp fuse in there, you'll blow it. So make sure you're fused properly. Make sure you use the, the right size wire um, to carry that sort of or that amount of current. But keep in mind, the 86 and the 85 side of the equation, very low current, uh, doesn't need to be big wire, uh, doesn't need to be anything too fancy. So just think about how you want to switch it and know that the ECU can do the, this half of the equation for you. So uh, you can use this for an intercooler fan to turn on at a certain temperature. Uh, you can use it for a perch solenoid, a transmission fan, all those things. So, real quick demonstration here, a short video on how to wire up a relay for anything from a fuel pump to a rad fan to bottle heaters, etc. Thanks for watching. Make sure and subscribe.